Hi, I'm Josh Einstein from SaveJersey.com, New Jersey's leading site for conservative news and views affecting the Garden State. Joining us today, we are happy to have co-founder and executive director of GoProud, Jimmy LaSalvia. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So I was wondering, I think our listeners will be interested uh, if you could just tell us uh, about uh, the GoProud organization, uh, how it came into being, uh, and why it's important to the conservative movement. Sure. Um, GoProud is a relatively young organization. We're just three years old. We started in 2009 uh, to provide gay conservatives and our straight allies with a voice and to be a part of the conservative movement and to engage on every issue because every issue is a gay issue. And so we we wanted to bring our perspective uh, and talk about why conservative policies that benefit everybody benefit gay Americans. You know, I, I've always said that conservatives have a big problem, have always had a problem in reaching out to different constituencies. You know, Jack Kemp was famous for um, reaching out to uh, black voters and to uh, inner city uh, uh, populations, uh, bringing a message of limited government and pro-growth policies that are good for everybody. But it's important that we always talk about how specific issues would benefit any group of people from their perspective. So that's what we do at GoProud. Um, I, like I said, we started in 2009 after President Obama was elected, and there was a transition going on in our country and uh, in the Republican Party and, and in the conservative movement. Uh, conservatives had been beaten uh, at the ballot box in uh, 2006, 2008, and and we saw that gay voters uh, were were split in those elections. Uh, about 28 percent of the gay vote went to uh, John McCain in 2008, and so that debunks the myth that all uh, gays are are liberal. But we also um, wanted to bring a voice to uh, our straight allies and and debunk the myth that all conservatives are anti-gay homophobes, because we all know that that's not true. Um, so uh, over the last three years, we've, we've engaged on, on just about every issue. We, uh, one of the first things that we worked on was a uh, pro-Second Amendment uh, concealed carry reciprocity amendment um, in the U.S. Senate. You know, we talked about how Gay people are often the victims of violent crime and that we should enable everybody to lawfully defend themselves. And then, of course, we had the health care fight. And, you know, having come about uh, during the time that the Tea Party was uh, uh, forming, uh, we, we work a lot and identify a lot with the Tea Party and, and Tea Party groups. I think that I would say a good portion of our membership are Tea Partiers. We had gay people at Tea Party rallies uh, holding Freedom is Fabulous signs. And um, so, but health care, and, and of course the rise of the Tea Party happened around health care and, and the stimulus. Uh, those issues are important, and we talk about why Free market reforms are good for gay people and, and gay couples versus government control of health care or government uh, spending. So that, that's kind of the, the, um, the thumbnail sketch of, of what we do. We are the only national gay organization to have endorsed Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan. Um, and, and we did that because at the end of the day, we agree with their vision of government, and we're all living in the Obama economy. And so uh, on issue after issue, uh, Mitt Romney's administration would be better for gay Americans 
than, uh, of course, what we've seen in the disastrous Obama administration. So well, it sounds that's like where uh, we're at. Sorry. Yep. Go ahead. Well, it, it sounds like go for a, uh, a full list of, of policy objectives. Um, I was wondering, methodologically speaking, I, I know in 2010, Go Proud became the first gay rights organization to release uh, campaign commercials against Democratic candidates. Um, other than that, in 2010, what what sort of is the modus operandi of Go Proud? How, yep. how do you get the message across? Well, I, I think that um, more than anything, we use grass tops messengers to to influence policy and politics and speak out in the media uh, often. Um, many of of your uh, listener of the listeners of this will remember uh, that Andrew Breitbart was a great friend of our organization, and he spoke out on our behalf. Uh, and Ann Coulter is is a good friend of ours, and and she talks about how just because you're born gay doesn't mean you're born liberal, and that we should welcome <laughs> gay people into the conservative movement. And so, w- w- using friends uh, with uh, a strong, loud voice, and of course, on our own, uh, bringing the voice of gay conservatives in the media is is primarily what we do. Um, because cause we think everybody should be everybody's voice should be represented on issues and in politics. So you'll see um uh just this last week I uh I wrote an op ed for the Daily Caller about why gay people and people who care about gay people should uh uh support Romney. Uh we had our other co founder Chris Barron wrote a piece for the Blaze. Uh I was on Fox and Friends after the debate and and so that that's a big part of what we do is speaking out and providing a voice uh for for gay conservatives. So now our listeners are are in the main uh conservatives and republicans but you know I'm sure there there's somebody out there that uh that isn't listening um you know that isn't a liberal and is listening or whose friend might make them listen to this um what would you say to them uh to convince them to to uh vote for romney um you know assuming that that also gay and and they're put off by his stance on, on gay marriage what what would be the pitch you would make to them right well i think that um you know i i happen to support same sex marriage i think that it's a good thing for couples but I also think that we're having a long national discussion on that issue, and it's happening uh, in the states, and, and that's where it should happen. Um, on the federal level, um, everybody, every gay person is, is impacted by our current economy. I travel around the country and, and talk to gay people in, in every part of the country, and there, there are many of them who are struggling and they're living paycheck to paycheck. They're they're just not sure how much longer they can hold on, and and they know that they can't they can't weather another four years of Obama. I think that um, economic freedom and economic growth is is good for every American, uh, especially gay Americans, and um, we'll continue to talk about same sex marriage and why that's important. That that issue is on a trajectory that um, I think uh, will end up with same-sex marriage someday all over the country. But there's a process in place now on that, and and um, I think that what we need to do is is make sure that there's a country left to uh, to get married in someday. Um, I'm worried, like a lot of gay people are worried, that we're going to end up like Greece or that our debt crisis is going to to crush us. And, you know, I've said, uh, you know, tongue-in-cheek several times, you know, I I support gay marriage. I want to get married someday, but you have to get a date before you can get married, and everyone knows you can't get a date without a job. And um, (laughs) and that's that's the truth. We, We need to get people back to work, and that has to be the priority right now. And, um, you know, I I can tell you that I would not be supporting 
Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan if I thought that they were anti-gay homophobes. They're not. Um, They're not where I am on the issue of marriage, but that doesn't make them a bigot. And 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 that that's important for everyone to know, and and so I hope that everyone will consider um, if they're better off than they were four years ago, or if they're ready for a change and real change, and and that's why I'm supporting uh, Mitt Romney. So, so that's my take on it. Terrific. Um, I, I really like that point about uh, you, you got to have a job to get a date first. Right. Um, it's absolutely spot on. But election issues aside, um, how do we continue on the right to build a big tent that you know has and includes and is inclusive of everyone uh, from uh, you know Go Proud to the Christian Coalition, from you know Republican Jewish Coalition yep. to you know our, our you know one of our shining leaders, uh, Mitt Romney, our, our nominee, who, who is a, a member of the Mormon faith. Well, one so of how, do, things, how do we reach out yeah. to different groups? Well, it, what's important to remember is we're not like the left. The left is made up of a coalition of people who trade support for their little pet projects. You know, the, the gay left wants their uh, special carve-out or recognition, and the unions want theirs, and the, the um, uh, pro uh, Choice people want theirs, and so they trade support, but they're not uh, brought together with a common uh, set of principles and and values like we are on the right. You know, we come to every single issue with shared principles and values. Now, sometimes we might come down on different sides of any given issue, but we're still coming at those issues with the same values, and that's what we need to talk about is our principles of limited government and and freedom for everyone. Um, I think that there are a lot of issues where we can all find agreement and where we can find support for uh, specific policies from from unlikely places. Um, But we need to do it from their perspective. Uh, Let me give you a couple of examples of issues that that we think are important and where we bring a gay person's perspective to it. Um, There's been a big discussion, a national discussion, about bullying in schools recently. And Mm -hmm. there in New Jersey, I know that that there's been a lot of talk about the the state's anti-bullying legislation and the mandate from the state on curriculum in schools. And um, I I think that anybody being bullied in school is wrong, whatever the reason, including their sexual orientation or the sexual orientation of their parents. Um, But, and and I think it's important that every child has a safe place to learn, and that's why we support uh, school choice that includes homeschooling or uh, uh, parochial schooling, um, as as a way for parents to be able to make sure that their child is in a safe place to learn, um, that's a that's a conservative policy proposal that everyone should be able to support. But we need to talk about it in uh, from everybody's perspective. Whether you're uh, an inner city uh, person who has their kids in a school that may or may not be safe, or if you're living in a rural community where, you know, you want the choice to send your kid uh, maybe to the next town where they can uh, uh, go to a school that offers more curriculum uh, or, or school them at home so they don't have to go so far to school. There are so many reasons why someone should support school choice, and we need to make sure that we talk about those reasons from their perspective. Another thing that we talk about a lot is um, entitlement reform specifically Social Security. Um, We support uh, Social Security reform that would include private inheritable accounts so that younger uh, Americans can make the choice to set up private accounts uh, as part of their Social Security benefit. And, And those accounts would be transferable, inheritable 
by anybody who you designate as your beneficiary. Well, that would uniquely benefit gay couples because currently gay couples uh, uh, do not enjoy a survivor benefit in the current social security system. So that's an example of us bringing our unique perspective to a conservative policy solution. So I think we need to do that for everybody, uh, whether you're uh, a faith community or a ethnic group or you happen to be gay. We need to reach out to everybody to show them that conservative policies are, are good for everyone. Now, I read that Go Proud itself doesn't have a stance on abortion. But I was right. wondering personally what your perspective on it was. Well, I happen to be pro-life. I, I always have been. Um, our, our position is that uh, the, the government shouldn't pay for it. Um, but as an organization, it's not an issue that we engage on um, regularly. Uh, I'll tell you, we, you know, that's another... That's another uh, misperception about the gay community is that everybody's pro-choice. You know, there are a lot of pro-life uh, gay people uh, all over the country, and uh, and some for for a variety of reasons. I know uh, people who are uh, pro-life because they uh, come from a religious background and it's a religious thing for them. I know people who are pro-life because they were adopted. And and uh, uh, they support uh, the right to life. I know uh, gay people who are pro-life because they know that our first right is the right to life, and that if if we're going to stand up for liberty for everyone and and freedom for everyone, then that must include the unborn. I also know a lot of gay people who are pro-life because many believe that there will become a time, because most gay people believe that they were born gay, that many believe that there will come a time when we're going to be able to know uh, the genetic marker or, or a, a way to know um, if, if an uh, unborn child may have a predisposition to be gay, and, and we certainly oppose selective abortion in those cases. So there are a variety of reasons why gay people can be pro-life. I happen to be pro-life. Um, but, uh, and, and I think one more on that issue. I think mm -hmm. that uh, the gay left has done the gay community a great disservice by, by being so tied to the pro-choice community. That goes back to what I said a little while ago, that the, the left is made up of uh, trade-offs and, and deals with other coalition partners. And, and that deal uh, with the pro-choice folks is a bad deal for gay people because the country's moving. The public opinion is changing on issues that affect gay people because everybody has gay people in their lives now. And, and it's very personal uh, when they think about how issues affect gay Americans. But America's not moving on abortion. We're still a divided country, and in fact, many young voters uh, are becoming more pro-life and, and more pro-gay. So I think that it's important for uh, the gay community to, to, to separate those issues. And, and like I said, the gay left, uh, with their partnership with the, the pro-abortion groups, has done the gay community a great disservice. Now, earlier you spoke of the fact that 28% uh, of the gay vote uh, went to McCain uh, when he ran. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk about the, uh, the breakdown of uh, perhaps conservative versus liberal in the gay community and also uh, any polls that you've heard of recently yep. regarding uh, Obama Romney. Absolutely. Well, first of all, in the 2010 election, the Tea Party election, uh, according to CNN's exit poll, 31% of gay voters voted for the Republican candidate for Congress in their district. So that was a huge uptick, and that, that is because the, the message of the Tea Party of rolling back the size and scope of government and, and reigning in the spending resonates with, with gay Americans. But just today, uh, Gallup uh, released uh, uh, findings from their uh, tracking poll uh, that uh, 
uh, specifically addressed uh, LGBT Americans, and and they they found that twenty uh, percent of gay people in this summer, uh, from June through September, is what this poll uh, was taken. That twenty percent of gay people uh, identify as conservative, and thirty five percent as moderate, uh, and just forty five percent identify as liberal. Just 44% of gay people call themselves Democrats, while 43% of LGBT voters identified as independent, and 13% as Republican. So if you're talking that uh, 55% of gay people call themselves moderate or conservative, and, and you have a larger margin... Uh, calling themselves independent or Republican, um, that that represents a lot of votes that conservative candidates can can uh, go after and and ask for. Um, I think that the big disparity between uh, the number of gays who call themselves conservative and the number who uh, identify as Republican is because the Republican brand is bad in the gay community. I don't think there's any any way to dance around that. Um, Republicans haven't done a good job of reaching out to gay voters. Frankly, if if there were any other demographic where uh, Republicans were were getting a third of the vote, uh, there would be a concerted effort to get more. I can tell you that, you know, in 2010, um, with 31% of gay voters voting for the Republican member of Congress, and and hardly anybody knows that number. I can tell you, if 31 percent of black voters were voting uh, for Republicans, everybody would know it, and there'd be a bigger effort uh, mm-hmm. among Republicans to to uh, get those people as part of the party. But um, but you know, there's another area where there's another reason why we need to do a better job of reaching out to the gay community and talking about why our proposals are are good for everybody. Um, but the the most recent polls, including this Gallup poll and a Harris Interactive poll um, uh, released about a month and a half ago of gay voters, showed that about 22% in one and 24% in another plan to vote for Mitt Romney uh, over Barack Obama. Now, neither of those polls has took place after the debate started, so I, I think we'll probably have to wait for the election exit polls to see what the final number is. But before the debates, 22 to 23% were saying that they were planning to vote for Romney. So um, I I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the actual number ends up about where we were in 2008. So we'll we'll see. That's terrific. just uh, as as we wrap up, I just as someone that's been around um, the block politically, uh, so to speak, I just have to ask you, what uh, what are your picks for uh, swing states that you think are going to go to Romney uh, in the uh, in the general election? Well, it's it's interesting to watch the polling today um, to to see movement. I mean, there's even movement in in New Jersey. I don't think that New Jersey is going to vote for Mitt Romney, but he's. He's uh, gained six points in the polls in in just the last month there. So I think any state is is on the table at this point. Um, I think New Hampshire is going to be very close and could be a place that is decisive in uh, holds a big part a role in in who's elected president. I'm hopeful that Wisconsin will will be a state where. Um, uh, Romney does well. We've actually endorsed um, the Senate candidate there, Tommy Thompson, who's running against a gay woman uh, for the Senate, and that Senate race is hotly contested. So I think with Paul Ryan being from Wisconsin and the Senate race being so close and so important to the control of the Senate, that Wisconsin is is an important race uh, or state to watch. Um, one more Senate endorsement that I want to mention, um, because some of your listeners uh, may be in that state, is in Connecticut. 
uh, we endorsed Linda McMahon way before the primary uh, because she was running against a rhino in the primary. And uh, uh, we endorsed her because she's a, a, a true conservative. And uh, anyway, uh, that's a tough race now. Uh, the polls are, are nearly tied in Connecticut. So uh, the Senate races are also important this year, and there are a lot of races that are, that are very, very close and that will determine the uh, makeup of the Senate. Well, this has been a pleasure, and I, I definitely got a lot out of it, so I definitely think our, our listeners will as well. Um, thank you well, so I hope much. That, get... I hope that your Sorry. folks will go to goproud.org and sign up for our email list so that they can keep track of what we do. We've got a YouTube page and a Facebook page, and uh, make sure to, to find us on the Internet and keep up with what we're, what we're up to. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. Thanks a lot.